Hello everybody, welcome to the Daily Bumble Bunch. Today I'm doing a pattern review that I found on Etsy. So this is the evening gown dress from Mellow Patterns. I have a good friend's wedding in Virginia coming up in September. My friend didn't give us a ton of parameters. She said something blue, something appropriate for a wedding. Um, she just didn't want baby blue. She wanted something more like cobalt blue. So when you buy this pattern on Etsy, it's a digital pattern. And so you download it as a PDF. It's also emailed to you. It's saved in your Etsy account. And then also this seller provided a Google Drive link, which I really liked. It comes in US sizes 2 to 30. It's pretty easy to download, print, tape it together and then cut it out. It comes with sewing instructions and pattern printouts for all sizes. So it also gives you height, bust, waist, and hip measurements as well for the pattern. So you can figure out, or try to figure out as you'll learn for me, figure out what size would be the best to make for your own body shape or whoever you're making it for. So I bought the fabric for this from Joanne Fabrics. I found this crepe back satin fabric in Mazarine Blue by Casa Solid. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes because I could not remember all of those words together. Uh, it was about $10.99, but I got it on slight discount. I got about three to four yards of this fabric because one of the particular drawbacks of this pattern is that they don't give you uh, an estimate of how many yards of fabric you're gonna need. So you just have to kind of guesstimate. And if you're a novice or not a professional like me, you may not really understand how much you need. So I have about a yard left over. All in all, it cost me, I think $55. And that was thread the fabric, and then also Pez, because I have a Pez addiction, and Joanne Fabrics is one of the only places that sells Pez. I made a size 12 for myself, because I couldn't quite figure out what the appropriate size was based on my bust, um, hips, and waist measurements. They were kind of all over the board in the chart that they gave, so I made the biggest one knowing that I could make it smaller. Um, it ended up being probably about two sizes too big for me. I took it in a total of four inches. So I have a lot of that left in the back and I figured, Hey, if I continue expanding, I'll just grow into this dress. Perfect. Actually, I lived a few years in Ghana and that's what they do there. It's really anticipating like if women are going to get pregnant, but I think it also just serves in life. You can keep a garment for a long time and just continue to take it out little by little by little. You don't have to get rid of it when you change sizes or when you grow a little bit. I also added in a pocket. This was an alteration that I made. I decided, you know, I'm going to wear this as a bridesmaid. I don't want to carry a bag around. I'll probably have a bouquet or something, maybe a glass of champagne or multiple glasses of other things during this wedding. And so why not have a pocket where I can keep at least my phone so I can take some photos, lip gloss, whatever I want in there. So I added that pocket in. I ended up putting two like thick and sturdy of interfacing on. I thought, oh, I'll make it like a really sturdy pocket. It lays a little bit odd. So here it is. Um, see, it kind of sticks out if you can see that there. So you have to be really careful with it. The pieces that are in here that like form the lining, um, basically you sew them on right side of the fabric together and then you flip it in and it forms, you know, a nice edge. Um, they had those pieces for the front and the back, but they didn't have any for the under armpit. Um, so I ended up just being lazy and not making an interfacing piece for under the armpit. And I ended up sewing around the edge, but just know in the pattern, you will have the, some of those facing pattern pieces but it won't tell you how to sew them in there or on there and also you're missing under the armpit. So it's a little bit confusing. You kind of have to choose your own event. You could create the underarm pattern piece. That would be the um, more intelligent thing to do that I did not do because I feel like I'm always rushing because I just want to see what the end product will look like. Another thing that I did was I made the straps two times the width out like really thin straps after you sew them. How do you get them the right side out? 
I couldn't do it. It was too thin for these. So I ended up just doubling them. So those are the few modifications that I made to this dress. But overall, I, I didn't stray a lot from the pattern design. From like printing out the pattern, cutting all the fabric, sewing everything together and doing all the finishes. I think it probably took me about 10 hours and that includes adding the pocket. Overall, I'd say the instructions are not great for a newbie sewist. As I was mentioning, there are no fabric measurements. You have to take it in if you don't guess kind of just right what your own measurements are. Maybe you'll be better at that than me, but I do think most people will be like me. Maybe, you know, you'll have to modify it in some way. Pattern pieces were missing, and then there's not the most clear instructions. I'm not sure that I picked the best fabric and the best dress shape for my body. I do want to mess around with the top and try to see if I can make something different or fit a little bit better. I do wonder if part of it is because I widened the straps. It's two sizes too big for me, so it means that the panels are bigger, so maybe I should use the measurements for two sizes smaller for the panels of the bodice. You can see it kind of left some puckers. It's not the best, it's not my favorite. So I'll see what I can make from this. It's a great dress, I could wear it. I really enjoyed sewing this and I really, really enjoyed twirling in this dress. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Bye.